Hey everybody, Christopher Odd here. Welcome back to Siberia. In which we are looking for a way to fix the little bandstand at the entrance to this place so that the people who run the university can give us $100 to pay the old couple to push our train to the uh, little charging station. So let's, uh, let's talk to these people down here. See if there's any information we can get out of them. Excuse me. <clears throat> can I disturb you a second? No. You could be uh. a little bit nicer about it. Keep quiet. In case you haven't noticed, we're somewhere that requires silence and tranquility. Okay, that's not going to get me very far. We did notice at the end that there's this purple little thing here that we're going to try to grab. See what this is. Yoink. Okay. <laughs> Amazon Memoirs of an Exposition. Memories, I should say. What the hell? What is this? Uh, the Red Amazon Cuckoo. Cuculus Vassol. The subspecies of the common Cuculus Canus is endemic in the Amazon forests and is one of the region's most brightly colored species. The male's plumage is a bright vermilion and the female's a little bit more blah blah blah. Habitat and food, reproduction. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's going to be anything important in here. You can pause. I'm not going to read through this one. If you want to read through this, uh, hit the pause. Take a read. And if I miss anything crazy, then I'm sure I'll be able to... Well, I have the book now, so I can look it up. But uh, Love of the grape. Okay, so the cuckoos love grapes. Um... Oh, we're talking about, okay, it's one of the jewels in the crown of the Berkstad University Ornithological Collections. However, scientists at the university have their own reservations about the species and its propensity to become practically invasive whenever conditions are favorable to it in the detriment of other rarer species. Heads of the Berkstad Avery have therefore undertaken a policy of birth control to attempt to balance out nature's imperfections in this artificial environment, the Forest Avignon Grape. Today is very rare to find the forest Sauvignon grape in the wild. The species has been decimated by a terrible equatorial phylloxera epidemic. However, in Europe, successful cultivation of the plant is the pride of the Berkstad University botany collection. It's largely contributed to the m revival of the species around the world. All right. So we may need, I don't know. Maybe we need one of these grapes at some point, but we do have a copy of it now. Along with this other copy of the Mushroom Guide, which is really quite interesting. So I can't interact with any of these people. We're going to carry on. Oh, we got a guy on the ladder now. Let's talk to him. I think this is the same ladder we were up before. Hello. Shh, don't talk so loud. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I was wondering if you could help me. Can't you see I'm very busy? What are you looking for? None of your business. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, I am trying to concentrate. I haven't got a lot of time left before Professor Pons's next tutorial. Professor Pons, you say? Would you mind working <laughs> elsewhere, please? Who is Professor Pons? All right. I think we've uncovered as much as we can uncover in this little library section. There's still a large... Well, I assume there's a large amount of university left to explore. Over to this way was where we met the three guys. Uh, so if I was to go this way... I'll save the heading upstairs for last. Oh, we got some action here. Excuse me. Sir, please, just a moment. Yes, what is it? I'm not deaf, you know. I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, but... This young mammothus primigenius is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Uh, yes. Probably. What do you mean, probably? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? 
Here we go. To tell you the truth, I don't know very much about mammoths, and I'm not here as a student. In fact, I'm a lawyer. It's all right. Nobody is perfect. All the same, the study of the Pleistocene period is fascinating. I'm sure it is. But I'm sorry to say my current mission is totally monopolizing my time. Um, another time, maybe. Ah, oh, that's what they all say. But anyway, let me present myself. I am Cornelius Ponce, Emeritus Professor and Lecturer at the University of Barockstadt. I'm proud to say that I'm head of the Department of Paleozoology at our university. Kate Walker, pleased to meet you. Now, he might be old enough to remember Hans, so that'll be interesting. Let's just actually go right to that and see. Where's my mouse at? There it is. To tell you the truth, I'm looking for Mr. Hans Varlberg. He's the sole heir of a very unusual factory. My company is in charge of negotiations for the takeover of this factory. Uh, at last word, he was living in Siberia. So, as soon as my train is ready, I'll be continuing my journey eastwards. Siberia. Ah, Siberia. But what was it you said again? Said what? You mentioned a name. The person you are looking for. Varlberg. Hans Varlberg. Do you know him? Hans Varlberg. How could I forget him? Such an extraordinary fellow. So inventive. We shared a passion for mammoths, you know, and we bonded over this passion. Without it, I confess, I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless retard like Hans. Oh, shit. At the time, we He's were dropping both dropping the R-bombs. Well, sort of. Put it this way. Hans had special permission to attend paleontology lectures. You see, he didn't really have the necessary qualifications. In exchange, Hans did a few odd jobs around the university. Your Hans Varlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. I'm not sure, my dear. Hans was above all questions of money and business. Just to imagine him running a factory, <laughs> perish the thought. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? He was always a mystery to me. He never said very much and never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through his incredible mechanical contraptions. His inventions, I admit, have been much appreciated by the university. The few times we really did talk, it was about his strange interest for mammoths and a doll. Some sort of doll that obsessed him. A doll, you say? Yes. He kept talking about it. One day he described it to me. A sort of children's toy. A miniature mammoth mounted by a mount. It appears he found it in a cave not far from his home. The event all sounds very dramatic. His account was slightly confused, but it awoke a great interest in me. What do you mean? To my knowledge, there was only one tribe who made figurines featuring a mouth, and that tribe is the Yukols. They live in the farthest reaches of Siberia, and for them, the dolls constituted a sacred object illustrating one of their central legends, how such a doll made the journey from the frozen Siberian north to a cave in the French Alps is a mystery to me. Even today, it is beyond my comprehension. Have you considered that Hans Varlberg was maybe making it up? You said yourself he didn't seem to have all his mental facilities intact. No, that's impossible. Hans couldn't invent the story like that. The doll is a sacred part of the Siberian legend. He described it to me in exact detail. Siberia itself is a chimera that paleontologists of the world are very fond of pursuing. It's interesting because we found that doll. And it's on the train with us. So... What the hell? Please do excuse my persistence, Professor. But did Hans Varlberg ever talk about his childhood? About Valadilen and his sister, Anna? No... Not that I recall. Pity. When I think of Hans, I'm always reminded of a mysterious mammoth doll he would <laughs> talk about so often. Okay, I get it. He likes the doll. A small effigy of a mammoth made of hide and mounted with its own miniature mount. Uh, how come he was so lucky? Why have I not seen this? I wonder why we're not telling him that we have it. What would you say about seeing Hans Varlberg again? 
After all, you could come with me and help me find him. <laughs> Young lady, you are very kind. <laughs> I'm far too old for such escapades. Oh, damn, okay. Arriving in Barakstadt is an amazing experience. I've never seen such a station. Uh, you came by train? Yes, in a kind of clockwork train with a spring mechanism that winds down. Regularly. You mean you drive a train? Young ladies of today never <laughs> cease to amaze me. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not the engineer. The train's engineer is actually an automaton. I am sorry, all this probably sounds very strange. A clockwork train, driven by an automaton. I once knew a man long ago who could have invented such a train. It was he who designed the bandstand in the main square. Ah, to think that he was even capable of creating such a gadget. He was astounding, a true genius. But oddly, at the same time, he was also... Almost a child. It was as if his mental and physical evolution had definitively halted at the age of ten. Can you believe that? Uh, yes. I think I can believe that. At least I'm beginning to. <laughs> He's obviously talking about Hans. My train stopped in a peculiar aviary. It's very odd. A lot of bird species seem to seek harbor there. Ornithology is far from being my favorite subject, but I must concede that the station is the pride of the university. It was initially intended for teaching purposes, but then birds started arriving from all around the world. <laughs> it seems that there are still rare species breeding there and flourishing. Are there? Can you give me an example? Hmm. I have been told about a kind of bird with peculiar habits. Let's see now. The, uh, uh, the Amazon cuckoo. That's right. But, uh, oh, I'm so foolish. I can't remember what was so special about it. Just that its about behavior it. is very peculiar. The Amazon? Where's the Amazon? What is the Amazon? I'm sorry, my dear, but one cannot learn everything in a lifetime. Specialization is the key to real knowledge. Why don't you pay a visit to our library? Thank you very much. If I were to say Forest Sauvignon to you, what would you say? Oh, let's see. Sauvignon. Sauvignon? I would say it's some kind of tropical shrub, don't you think? We are talking about the same plant, then. It is a very rare shrub with small, juicy fruits. I found a book about the Amazon, and it says that there are even Sauvignon plants growing right here in Barakstadt. You wouldn't know where, would you? Mm, Amazon Sauvignon plants here? No. No, I don't think there are any. Highly implausible, but uh, you should ask the station master. He is keeper of the greenhouse at our university, so he could tell you more than me. Oh, thanks very much. So I guess we will have to get some of those berries uh, to distract those birds to climb up the ladder that's by the train. Uh, Professor, uh, how do I say this? You see, I didn't think I'd need a lot of money when I set out. And it turns out I need money after <laughs> all. It's a delicate matter, I know, but I was wondering if you could help me out. My dear, it would be a pleasure. But you see, I barely have enough myself to cover my meager expenditure on what I'm paid by the university. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to offend or... However, if we look at the example of Hans, it is true that our university always rewards people who perform some service for it. This is our dear rector's jurisdiction, however. Okay, so we already have talked to the rector, so we're pretty much good to go I'll here. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. I do want to see if it's possible to hand him this book about the Amazon. Nope. What about the mushroom book, just out of curiosity? Nope. Okay, well, that's it. We talked to him. Let's keep going down this hallway. Oh, they've got a door at the end. Let's check this. No point. It's locked. Damn it.
Damn. No point. It's locked. Nothing is open in here. Okay, we're gonna go upstairs now. We need to find some type of little bobble. Or maybe now we can go back and talk to the station master, but... Wait a sec. Did I see... I noticed this light is out. Oh, and so is this one. Okay. Nothing. I'm just being paranoid. Alright, upstairs we go. We'll see if we can find anything. We've got a whole other area to explore, I guess. Oh, who's this? Okay, we got a projector. And then when this guy. I don't know. Oh, now they're not sitting there. That's weird. I'm probably going to have to get something going on this projector and then watch it from this angle. No point. It's oh, locked. damn it. I thought we we're going to be good to go there. Not so much. Okay. Well, it seems as if I have no other choice but to go back and talk to the station master. Because I think I've uncovered pretty much everything in this university. And that old guy, Dr. Pons, has suggested to me that I should go back and talk to him. So, let's do it. I'll talk to this kid outside again, but he's probably just going to hit on me. <laughs> but you never know. Hello. Hey, baby, oh, you party? It. You sure looking mighty fine. Love those big round eyes. Just who do you think you are? Hey, he's spunky. I like that in a lady. Okay, I'm hooked. Come on, Zol. I'll let you buy me that coffee. <laughs> I don't remember ever asking. Hey, don't play hard to get. I know you like it big time. Listen, kid. Go back home and play with your toy cars and forget you ever saw me. <laughs> All right. Enough of him. I, he's going to have to play a part, though. Maybe he's just there to throw me off, but he reminds me of the old lady that was outside of Shani's place in The Witcher. <laughs> That was, like, the toughest boss I've ever faced, and he is turning into that for me. Okay, so this way would be to the people on the boat. I need to go find the station master, and I think he's across the way and then down, if I'm not mistaken. And maybe we can ask him about this bush, then, so that we can get those, uh, those birds away from the ladder. Not exactly sure. I'm just waiting for something to fall into place. I'm sorry to disturb you. What can I do for you, miss? I feel like I've lost my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Hey, anything I can do, miss, you just let me know. Okay, that doesn't help. I won't disturb you any longer, Mr. Station Master. I'm gonna give Welcome him this book. Stuff, miss. And let's see if that works for us. Oh, it doesn't. Disappointing. I'm sorry to disturb you. What can I do for you, miss? I've just been to see the rectors. And they told me to get the train out of the station as quick as I can. Uh, I thought they'd say that. Rules are rules, and you gotta stick by them. Not a good idea to get into trouble with the university administration. Uh, absolutely. I've got enough worries as it is. What should I do then? 
Well, uh, I suggest you <laughs> move your train. But it's like I say, the springs are unwound. Everyone seems to think it's my fault. The locomotive's engine might not work, it's true, but maybe there's some other way of moving the train. It's a possibility, I suppose. Uh, what were you thinking of exactly? Uh, nothing. It was just an idea. Anyway, miss, you shouldn't hang around here. I have a job to do. Yes, sir. Okay, that's not helping. Let me ask him about this plant. Where that's might I find I some forest sauvignon plants, please? No place around here, that's for sure. I don't know what you're talking about. That stuff's from the Amazon. Sketchy. <laughs> you know, for someone who knows nothing about the plant, you seem pretty well informed about which mysterious faraway country it comes from. Oh, um, Amazon, Peru, Papua, New Guinea, it's all the <laughs> same to me. Gotta go. Gotta work. What? Wait, don't go. You know what? I don't think he was being totally straight with me. Oh, really? Yeah, good observation. Okay, let's follow him. Where the hell did he go? Um, let's see. Let's go check this area out. We know there was this big, like, locked door over here at one point, but it also had... this little foresty area, and perhaps we'll find this Sauvignon tree in here. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get out here. I can't go that way. So now I think I need to find this guy again, because he ran off and... Oh, I guess maybe the people on the boat would know? That's possible. Let's check back in this direction. But I imagine I need those things to give to these birds. <gasps> yeah. If I don't find him this way, then what I'll do is head back to the guys in the boat and I'll ask them maybe about the plants. And who knows, maybe they'll tell me. Okay, there wouldn't be anything scattered around here, would there? Doesn't look like it. Okay, I'll try the people on the boat. I'll see if that's any help. Because aside from that, I can't really think of who else I would talk to about this. Not like they're good. I don't have a f like. I don't feel that they're gonna know. But I've been wrong many times before. What do I have to lose? such an old game, they really nailed the environment sounds. Oh, there he is. Hold up, hold up. There he is. Excuse me, Station Master, but I need you again. Can't you see? I am very, very busy. <laughs> uh, no. I, well, well, I am. Very busy indeed. But, uh, okay, okay, I, I think I can give you a minute of my time. Just tell me where these things I'm are. I'm looking for a kind of little juicy berry. You don't know where I could find some? 
Look, lady, the station doesn't have any Sauvignon berries, not even four Sauvignon. Funny you should mention it. That's exactly what I was looking for. Forest Sauvignon. Uh, Sauvignon, raspberries, red currants, they're all the same to me. And we don't grow none of them here. But you see, I have just read a very interesting book, which says that the rare Sauvignon berry is actually cultivated here, in the famous Baruchstadt University Avery itself. So there, pal. Oh, if it's in a book, then... Don't believe everything you read, miss. I don't know why, but I don't think you're telling me the truth. What do you mean? I don't know. How should I know where to find your stupid grape? Go ask your professor, what's his name, Pons, the paleontologist. But you're the master of this station, so you should know better than anyone. Nobody tells me anything. I don't know. Go see the old guy with the fossils. What? But I've already seen him. The sailors on the barge reckon they could help me tow my train out of here, but they're asking for money. You couldn't possibly help me out with a few dollars, could you? I would be very grateful. Uh, miss, really, I- I'm surprised at you. <laughs> Asking for money from a <laughs> total Finally stranger. somebody called her out on it. Oh. Right. I need cash. I need it to get my train out of your station, because my train is getting in your way, disturbing your birds, and upsetting your bosses. Look, lady, I'm only a station master. I, I got my problems, and you got yours. Okay, well, he's not really helping. Um... All these birds in a station... It's amazing. This is no ordinary station, miss. Oh, no. These birds are part of the prestigious University of Baruchstadt Ornithological Collection. Over the years, this aviary has housed some of the most fantastic species from all over the world. And I am not exactly your typical station master, either. This little world is my responsibility, and that is no easy task. I can well believe you. And you know what's the hardest? The hardest thing is to keep interspecial harmony. And one day some explorer introduced a couple of cuckoos from the Amazon. Whoa. It wasn't a good idea? A nightmare. You know, cuckoos lay their eggs in the nests of other species, right? Now, what's more, they also push the host's eggs out of the nest so that they receive all the mother's attention, right? Accursed cuckoos. Nightmare. I see what you mean. That's one tricky bird. And there was nothing you could do to stop it? The faculty declared the bird a protected species. If it wasn't for our mechanical eagle, we were sitting on a major ornithological catastrophe. You have an automaton here? A wonder of technology. It's an eagle that's mounted on rails in the air. It passes through and it swoops down to collect parasite eggs. But heck, the dang eagle's been out of order for several years. Impossible to collect the eggs myself. Why not? I, uh, I can't climb up the gangway. I fell off it several months back, and I still have a pain in my spine. Not to mention the vertigo I've been getting. I only, only have to look up in the air. Whoa. You poor soul. That must be very hard. The worst thing is, cuckoo eggs piling up in the nests. Soon the rectors are going to notice. There's trouble in store. Big trouble. Oh, I'm worried. Yep, worried. All right, so that was a repeat, which I did not want to listen to. I won't disturb you to. any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barokstadt, miss. But he is now sending me back to Ponds, and I'm going to go to Ponds and be like, what's going on here? Because one of you guys knows something, and somebody is not telling me the truth. Obviously, the Station Master does seem a little bit sketchy. But I'm not sure what exactly the deal is. So I'm going to really quickly talk to these guys on the boat, see if I have the option to bring up this plant. If not, then uh, I'm going to head back to Ponds and see if he can tell me what's going on. I'll go in there and Ponds will be murdered. Drastic twist. I doubt it. Hey there, on the boat. Go to talk, share the mademoiselle. My husband say, hello, young lady. <laughs> you want to talk to us? Oh, she, that character's so perfect. Here we go. Have you ever seen Amazon Forest Sauvignon? Yet, never go Amazon. Do you know if I can find some here? Yet, you must to Amazon go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. 
great. I'll leave you to it. I won't disturb you again. Do svidania. Okay, so they don't know either. Kind of had a feeling that was going to happen. Which means I'm going to have to go back to ponds. 